Welcome back, YouTube. My name is Matt, owner operator of MarketMotion.com, where we offer technical analysis, dark pool print, and option flow activity. Now, we do run and operate a free Discord that offers a ton of free information for you, as well as a premium member channel uh, for those people who are looking for a little bit more. And in that premium member channel, uh, we offer tons of different alerts, whether it be short options, long options, or just that good old fashioned, let's buy shares and hold long term. Uh, in that gold package, you do have a sequencing channel where we find algorithmic patterns in the markets. Uh, so we do share that with you guys with what we do find in that gold package, as well as a private chat with myself during trading hours where you can ask questions. Now, we did just finish up a 30 day all free access where you could come into the Discord and have access to every single channel to see if you found value in what it was that we were offering. But now that that's done last week, we had several members roll over into those packages. And for those of you who have not yet experienced what that Discord is, or you haven't been able to experience what the premium channel has to offer, uh, we are now rolling out a seven day free access uh, you just head on over to the website at mktmotion.com black slash premium members and you'll just select a package whether that be the, the bronze the silver or the gold and you will just put your credit card on file and if it's something that works for you you'll just continue on and you'll roll over into that package but if it's not something that's working for you you can just log back into your account hit that cancel button no harm no foul but with that said, we're going to roll over and we're going to talk about uh, the market recap from last week, in addition to the, the video we put out last week with our option plays, in addition to what our three new plays that we're looking at going into next week. Let's get started. All right, guys, so let's get into recapping uh, the action from last week. I know these last two weeks have been kind of brutal, at least with SPY, there's been just a ton of chop, no confirmation of direction. Um, so going into Friday, we did see the market, at least with SPY, push higher and over that 420 mark, even pushing up to that 423. And I do believe we're going to see the market push even higher going into next week. Um, they are pushing outside of that rising wedge pattern, um, and it is something that I'm cautious about. I'm cautiously bullish, I should say, um, but it is something to look out for. I do think we're going to push higher, but there is some bearish divergence that's building on that money flow index and that relative strength index. So just keep a tight eye on that. Now, with the IWM, it's trending. It started trending higher on Friday. Um, but I still want to see that thing push through that 230 resistance before I start becoming bullish again on the QQQ. Um, it still looks rather weak, but it is starting to form that rounded bottom pattern. And I would like to see it push through that uh, 337 resistance point. And if that can do that, I think the bulls can retake control and we can see that push higher as well. Now, right after hours after market hours on Friday, the Fed comes out with the story that they are warning the potential of significant declines in the market due to high evaluations, which is true. These markets need to pull back. It would be healthy for these markets to pull back. But right now, as long as the Fed keeps feeding money into the market right now, these trends are just going to keep going higher and higher. But we are getting close and I am cautiously bullish on the market in general. This thing does need to pull back. But as long as the Fed keeps funding money into these markets, uh, it's just not going to stop yet. But soon they will be tapering off. Now, we also saw some big growth names uh, that started to catch a bid, uh, at least on Friday. Most noticeably for me, it was Boeing. It was getting extremely oversold. All those indicators were hitting bottoms. Uh, we did scalp it one time last week for almost 120%. But then again, we did scalp it again on Friday. That went for, uh, I think we got out around 50 or 60%. But that thing ran over 100% as well. So we got out a little bit early. Um, but I will be watching Boeing going into next week. It's one of my favorite plays long term. I do see Boeing getting back over that 300 mark. Uh, next week, I'm looking for it to push up hopefully to that 244, 245, and maybe even 250, depending on how these markets react. Uh, but from here, we wanna get in and recap those three plays that we put out last week. Now, one of our plays that we put out last week was an Apple May 28th 
130 put that we purchased for two dollars and 35 cents because we had noticed a lot of closed put flow in addition to some bearish divergence on those indicators so we decided to take a put on apple uh, we did end up closing those for a hundred percent last week so the discord was excited and if you took that play here on youtube i'm sure you had a good return as well now on our second play we called out xrp it was a crypto play for us in the altcoins and XRP, we put a price target of $1.87 on that from an inverse head and shoulder, kind of a cup and ha handle pattern. Um, it did push up towards $1.78, $1.79 last week. Um, it got close, but not quite there yet. Since then, it's retraced back around our entry point around $155, $156. Um, it hasn't retraced in that parabolic pattern yet. It's really just came back down to that neckline and the inverse head and shoulders. So it could bounce from here, but if you are able to participate in that play, it was up 12.8% and hopefully you took some profit. But unless this thing pulls back to under $1.40, I'm still bullish on XRP. Now in our third play, I told you to buy some Twitter shares and we have a $100 price target on that by the end of the year. And Twitter, as you all seen two weeks ago, had a had a bad earnings reaction to what I thought was at least a decent earnings. Um, but we did see it fall more this week. Um, you're probably down about 2.6% if you took that play, which honestly, it's really not that bad. But we did see Twitter pull back down towards the bottom of this channel. And we're going to talk about more about Twitter later in this video, because it's going to be one of my option plays that I'm looking at this week because it's extremely oversold right now. So with that said, I'm still bullish on Twitter. And now we're gonna roll into the three option plays that we're looking at going into next week. So one of my favorite option plays going into next week is gonna be in the energy sector. We saw a lot of bullish flow coming in on Friday. Um, so we're gonna be looking at ET and whether you're wanting to buy shares or we're looking at the October 15, 2021, $10 call that's going for 76 cents. Now, as you can see here in energy transfer, we have this long cup and handle pattern that it did confirm a breakout for us. It got above that $8.56 resistance. Um, and typically in this pattern, you're gonna see it pop up, which it did last week uh, towards that $10 range. And there's a good chance that it's gonna retrace. And if it does, it's gonna pull back to around this $8.56 range and we're going to want to see it hold support there so if i'm taking this option play i might look to start nibbling on it on monday but i will be looking for that that pullback to retest that cup and handle neckline and if it does and it can show me that it's going to show support there i'm going to hit that thing a little bit harder and i'm going to try to ride this thing up towards that 12 13 range um because these are some pretty cheap options and as you can see down here, we had some pretty big volume on that daily uh, candle. So it's something I'm looking at. In addition to that, we're, we were going through the option flow. And as you can see, uh, people have been buying up the January 20th, 2023, $10 calls. So they are buying up those leaps. In addition to June 18, $10 calls for a little bit shorter term, maybe two, one, a little over one month out. Um, but at the end of the day, most noticeably, uh, we saw a ton, or I wouldn't say a ton, but we saw a good bit of option flow over $300,000 worth in premium um, hit the October 15, 2021, $10 calls. And that came within about six minutes on Friday from the market closing. So that was very interesting. Um, it does show bullish tendency there when we see that kind of flow come in so rapidly, especially towards the end of market close. Um, but you can also see that there's been some dark pull activity going on since the 1st of April, and that price has continued to climb. So it does look like the institutions are buying. Um, so ET is certainly one to look out for. Uh, but on this play, if you, you were to take it, whether you're buying shares or the October 15, 2021 calls, uh, we do have some pretty good upside here. If we're able to uh, say get that pullback and we just nibbled in the beginning. Um, you're looking at your, your option in the beginning before doing any averaging in around that neckline. Uh, you could be down as much as 60% on that option. Um, but if it does show us that support at that neckline and we're able to just hit it a lot harder as it shows it's, it's going to continue that bullish uptrend, uh, we're going to average in there. And if this thing does what we think it can do, 
Uh, we'll be looking as much as 200, 300% return on investment. But what I do recommend is to trim out of the position as we go. I never hold a full position to the initial price target that I'm looking for. Um, so do know that the support levels are going to be around $8 and $8 and 50 cents. Um, if I were to hold a stop loss on this, it's going to be at $8. Um, and I want to see a 15 minute candle close below $8 before I trigger that stop loss. Um, and some resistance points along the way, if you do want to trim out of that position, something that I highly recommend, um, it would be at $11.35 and the $13.70 resistance zone. And my price target that I'm putting on ET is going to be $11.13. Now in our second option play, lo and behold, here we are again, one of my nemesis from last week, giving us a 2.6% loss on our shares. Uh, we're going to be looking at Twitter and those June 18, 2021, 60 calls that are going for what I think is extremely cheap at 93 cents. And if we take a look at the chart with Twitter, we can kind of see where it's, it's rounding off down towards this $38 support level. Um, I don't think it's ever going to get there. It's, it's at this uptrend channel where it bounced strong off that bottom trend line and it's showing us that hey it wants to pop off this downtrend channel and push up towards that 56 mark um so we do want to see it push up there and hopefully fight the resistance of the downtrend channel and so some levels that i'm taking a look at because twitter these levels are extremely oversold when we look at the RSI, the MACD, the Money Flow Index, the William R percentage. Every single one of these indicators are hitting bottoms, and this thing needs to balance. Boeing did a similar thing on Wednesday or Thursday where all of these indicators hit the bottom, and it popped hard. It ran about $8 in the close. That was the first scalp we took that was up over 120% on those scalps. So Twitter's doing the same thing here. And if I want to try to catch the fallen knife, this is where I'm going to enter when all of these indicators are all hitting the bottom simultaneously. Now, if I look into the option flow with Twitter, as you can see, some people are buying up the May 14, 54 calls, uh, as well as the 55 calls. And when we look into the dark pool, uh, we can see since 53.69, it looks like there's been some buying and it's pushed this thing up into 54 and then 53, low 53 levels. But to me, when I see a price stay stagnant like this, um, it looks like to me, institutions are accumulating those shares. And it, to me, 86 million, 5 million, 15 million, 63 million, 92 million. When the price stays within one or two dollars, it's not really going up or down. Um, I'm thinking that they're accumulating these shares as well as when I look at these indicators at the bottom, in addition to this type of option call flow. So I'm bullish on Twitter. And if I go and look at the profit calculator on these options, there is some downside, but our support levels are gonna be at 53.50 and $50.55. My stop loss is gonna be this bottom support area at $50.55. Resistance to the upside, well, we're looking at 56.10 and 57.70. If we can break those two areas, my price targets are going to be 58 and 62. And with these June 18 calls, I think it gives us enough time because this should be a pretty big bounce if we do get a bounce. And if it does go according to how we have it charted out, um, those options could be up as much as two, 300% as well. And if you do get triggered on a stop loss, there's a good chance that you'll be down 50% or more. So either keep 50, 55 as your stop loss or 50% on that option play. Now in our third option play going into next week, I'm looking at Nike and I'm looking at those elite plays in the January 21st, 2022, 160 calls that are going for $4.78. Now, when we take a look at the technical analysis on Nike, we can see that it's been trading in this downtrend channel um, as well as this symmetrical triangle. It's bounced off of this symmetrical triangle three times now. Now it's showing us a double bottom where we might get 
a nice W pattern here. It was able to break above that W neckline, uh, but it closed right at it on Friday. So I am gonna look for a continuance in this pattern. It did break that downtrend channel and close above it. And we got a really good daily volume candle. So I do think the bulls are starting to push in or come in and they're gonna push higher, I think up towards this uh, $150 range in the short term. Um, so I'm buying up those Nike leaps. The support level on Nike is going to be 134.70 and 130. If I were to put a stop loss on Nike, it's going to be at that 130 level or at a 50% loss on these leap options. Our resistance to the upside to our first target of 150 is going to be 142.25 and 145. Now let's take a look at the upside on these options. If we are able to hit our 150 mark, uh, we're gonna be looking at maybe a 50, 60%, depending on how fast these, these options go up in price. Uh, but if we are able to hold through that, push through that 150 resistance point, I'm sure we might climb a little higher towards 155, get a pullback towards 150, 145, and then spike up again. And if we're going to chase that 170 price target, we're again going to be looking at that two, 300% return on investment. Um, so I'm a big fan of Nike. So that is a play I'm looking to pick up on Monday. But as always, guys, I appreciate you guys watching our YouTube channel. But be sure to like and subscribe, share this thing. And I thank you for watching and you guys have a good day.